Well, it's time to get the haven caulked. And today, I'm going to show you how I've gone about to do that. But first, I want to take you out to Massachusetts. Uh, as many of you know, I spent a couple of weeks out there with Steve helping him with Arabella. So all of that coming up on this episode of The Art of Boat Building. I've gathered together a few tools that we're going to need in order to caulk the boat. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about the trip that I took out to Massachusetts where I worked on Acorn to Arabella. I had an amazing time working with Steve from Acorn to Arabella. When I arrived, Steve had already rough fit the breast hook. Given Arabella is a double ender, there are two breast hooks in her. I tackled the final fitting of the stem while Steve fit the stern. It was a great opportunity to try out the framing slick that I had recently made. I must say it performed better than I had expected. The steel kept its edge even in the tough white oak rootstock. I had some questions about the angle of the handle and I must say it was a very comfortable tool. Once we fitted and bolted in the breast hooks, we turned our efforts to sorting the black locust stock for the shelves that would run fore and aft. After planing down the stock to a manageable size, we spiled the patterns. I continued to work at the stem heading aft and Steve at the stern heading fore. There were some tricky scarf joints to cut and ultimately we ended up with 10 pieces. By the end of my time, we had finished the breast hooks, got the shelves in, and started some of the deck beams. In addition, we had had some great discussions about boats and life. But more importantly, we had become close friends and good colleagues. Well, I really had a great time working on Arabella, and it was also great to spend a couple of weeks getting to know Steve. He's really an amazing craftsman. Uh, but now it's time to get back on my boat, the Haven. So I've gathered together a few tools here that we'll need for caulking. And the first thing to do in the process of caulking is to clean up the seams or the, the joints between the planking. And I did that with this reefing hook here. And uh, I made this hook and so you can see how that, if you want to watch that video, you can see uh, there's a tag up in the uh, upper corner here. Uh, so the, the way that this works is that you can pull with the tool, and the important thing here is to keep the blade in line with the joint. If you vi deviate from that a little bit, you can tear out and make the plank joint too wide. So after I've cleaned that out, in some cases, it's just a matter of cleaning sawdust and things like that out of there. Um, then I push forward with it, and that actually sort of pushes the fibers of the cedar together so that it makes a really uniform 1 8 inch joint. So after the reefing hook, then the next thing uh, tool here is a putty knife. Now, it's an old putty knife that I rounded the edge off here and customized it a little bit. Mainly I need to use this to start the cotton in the joint. Um, I saw this on uh, a tips from a shipwright where he had taken an old putty knife and done that. Um, and trying to do it with a straight putty knife to begin with, I had remembered that video and by rounding that off it really makes it uh, an easy tool to start the cotton in the joint. Once we have the cotton in the joint, then the next tool is the caulking wheel. And again, this is a tool that I had made earlier um, with some, I'd made it with some fender washers. And, and again, you can watch uh, a, a video on how I made that uh, up in that upper corner there. 
So after we've got the cotton pressed in with the caulking wheel, then we need to go back and set the cotton in the joint. And we're going to do that with caulking irons. And caulking irons come in, they're graded by their size. And this is a set that I bought through the wooden boat store. Um, I believe this set was maybe about $55, $60 or something like that. And they're, they're not the best quality ones. And you can see the finish on here has sort of a sandy finish. So these are actually not forged, but have been cast in this shape. Uh, many times, I, and I don't know if there is a benefit to a forged one. I'm assuming that there probably is, that forged ones would be a little better. Um, so they're graded in from double zero, which is this one, and then a zero and a one. So the double zero is supposed to be, the blade is supposed to be 1 32nd of an inch wide at the bottom. Now what I discovered was is that it was much wider than that. So I actually took this one and cleaned it up on my um, stationary belt grinder and honed that edge down so that it's a little bit closer to 1 32nd. It's actually what I ended up with was just a little bit under a sixteenth, which actually fits this boat really well. After I had the iron put together, um, many of you had seen me build this caulking mallet. Now, I built the caulking mallet. It's 14 inches long, and it, at first it was a little unwieldy. Uh, I felt that in the way that it was using it just felt kind of awkward. And in watching other videos of people using a caulking mallet, uh, it looks awkward. But surprisingly, after you get used to it, it really is a very comfortable tool to use. Now, I had read that in small craft like I have, that many times they would use a smaller caulking mallet. And I actually started turning one on my lathe, and I just didn't get it done in time. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and try this and see how it works. In doing so, I also tried out some other mallets that I had uh, of different sizes. And I found that with a smaller mallet, you really needed to swing quite a bit harder. Where with this mallet, I don't know if it's just the amount of mass that it has, but it was really just took only a little bit of a tap to get it in there. So I'm really pretty happy with the size of the mallet um, I do think that I'll probably make another one that'd be a little bit smaller. Um, this one, I think I'd mentioned, is 14 inches, and I was going to make one that was about 11 inches. So now that we have the tools discussed, the next thing that we need to need, need is the cotton. And the, so the cotton comes in one pound bales like this. And I'm pretty sure that for the amount of cotton that I've already used, that one pound is going to be probably plenty for this boat. So the first thing to do is take our reefing hook and clean out a joint. The next step is to determine the length of cotton that I need here. So what I do is I just sort of stretch it out the length of the boat. Well, one of the things that is different about caulking a small craft like this is a matter of just pushing the cotton in. And you may be familiar with shipwrights that are caulking larger vessels where they actually knot the cotton as they go along the seam. It's done just a little bit different here, where we twist the cotton in order to get its strength. After I have determined the length of the cotton, then what I want to do is to divide it into two 
strands, basically dividing it in half. <clears throat> the full amount that it comes is way too much to push in this size of a space. So I figured out that if I just pull this and it just pretty much divides itself right in half, that that's just about the right amount of cotton. After I have that divided, then I can take one of them and wrap it up so it stays neat. So now what I'm going to do is go to the front of the boat because uh, I'm going to work from right to left since I'm right-handed. So what I have found to do is I leave the strand running all the way to the um, stern of the boat. And to get started, what we need to do is to twist this like so. Uh, you can see that if I just take the cotton like this and I pull on it, it's going to pull apart really easily. But if you twist it, it doesn't even take very many times, but suddenly then becomes really strong. So to get started, I take just a little bit of a twist and I start it and I use this putty knife that I have um, customized to fit in there and use that to sort of push it in there to get it started. And then I just use the boat to roll the twist like so. And I only do about 12 10 to 12 inches or so at a time, and then hold it here. And then take the caulking roller and get started, and then just slowly work that and push that into the space. Once I get to where my twist's in, then I start rolling it some more. Again, about 10 or 12 inches. And then come back with my caulking wheel and push it in between the planks. One important tip that I can uh, tell you here is that once you have the cotton started, it's very easy to
to place the caulking wheel in the groove so that it won't wiggle around. Then just slowly work the cotton in there and it goes in really well. But as soon as you take it out of there and try to lift it up here, it's gonna roll around on you and you're not gonna be able to get it in there. So the important trick here is to make sure that the wheel stays in the planking groove and then slowly work it. And back up every once in a while. So patience is a key here, is to just a few fractions of an inch at a time and it goes in really nicely. All right, now that I've got um, the seam all caulked, uh, now I need to go back in with a caulking iron and a caulking mallet and set the cotton. So have you ever wondered how cotton caulking works and stops a boat from leaking? Well, let me show you on this diagram. What we have here, this is a drawing of what the planks would look like with the joint here without any cotton in it. So once we drive the cotton in, then we have the cotton sitting here in the plank. Now once the plank or the boat takes up the water, what happens is all of this planking on each side swells up and swells up the cotton. What it does is it creates sort of like a keyway in here so that the, this is what seals the boat up. So this not only makes the boat watertight, but it also adds to the strength of the boat. So you can see that it actually becomes an integral structure of the boat in locking the planks together and making it a more rigid structure. So to set the cotton in there, I need to use a caulking iron and a caulking mallet. And the trick here is that we want to set the cotton in basically in the middle of the plank. So my planking is a half an inch thick. So I know that I need to have probably about an eighth or three sixteenths uh, showing on the inside. And I can kind of gauge that by the end of the caulking iron. So to get started, I place the iron in the groove behind where I want to caulk at and then give it a tap and a second tap and then move on. And you'll see that I rock the iron forward on the second tap. Well, that's pretty much for uh, caulking uh, for small craft. Uh, the next thing that I will do is put some seam compound in on this. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is to establish the water line because there's two different types of seam comb that are used for a boat like this. So we'll be covering that in the next episode. So in the meanwhile, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the Art of Boat Building.